The smartest guys around are about to break it down like they've won the game a million times. Wow, actually, they didn't really win the game at all. Surviving no way at all. Yes, that's right. We know it all. We know how to put the music on. Uh, Rob Cicero <laughs> back here with the great Stephen Fishback. Happy Mergatory. Happy Mergatory. Hello, fellow human. Just two <laughs> living know-it-alls here two to talk about one. Two living know-it-alls. Deadpool. Sorry, Mariah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Oh wait, no, the Whoa. song. Whoa! You like the theme song that much? So much. Not crazy. Somebody turn this theme song off. Oh my god! Well, we're here to make up for lost theme songs. Oh my god! Yeah. All right. Yeah, that was uh, that was for last week. All right. <laughs> We're back. We got a lot to talk about yeah. here at the merge. Even though it was kind of a ho hum vote, uh, yeah. I, I really I feel like I have a lot to say still about uh, this, and I'm looking forward to breaking it all down with you. Likewise, Rob, I too have been looking forward to speaking with you about it. Yeah, I think it was an interesting episode. I mean, I think you know, well, they, 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 well you know, we'll get into it. It's an interesting episode. But okay. Rob, first, I wanted to say that I noticed that you yes. really came out strong in a podcast with Chappelle against nerds. <laughs> yeah, too hard. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I just, it was funny because like a previous, a few previous, you know, a few days previous, I had come out, uh, you know, in favor of hot people on yeah. Survivor. And I feel like, you know, probably nobody would have ever, ever predicted the plot twist where the know-it-alls come out in favor of hot people and against nerds. Yeah. yeah. Yes. An okay. Unusual take from the two of us. We, uh, you know, hate that in others uh the things that we don't like about ourselves yeah you know uh, uh i know i i was i was teasing uh that i just think that you know these uh 25 and 26 year olds i think should be have better things to do with their time than seeing how fast they could name survivors in excel sheets you either die a nerd <laughs> or you work out hard enough to become a high we all like survivor i get it i get it but come on yeah come on have a uh, little, you know, like a uh, YOLO. All right. Come on, yeah. kids. Well, this week was a, was a week that really helped, you know, really, you know, was great for the hotties and the fitties. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> fitties? <laughs> yeah, I don't know about the fitties. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, they all won the challenge and they were immune. Yeah, that was good for them. You know, it was interesting. The um, I talked with uh, Evie last night. We had a great podcast about it. Evie was saying, a very hot take, I thought. That you know what? Maybe maybe Mergatory kind of needs the hourglass because imagine, because really everybody hates it, right? But could you imagine? Yeah. Wow. All of the st big strong guys win the challenge, and then Jeff comes out like, actually, you lost. You're going to tribal <laughs> council. Everyone would loved it. Venus yeah. would have been a genius today. Yeah. Um celebrated really from even more. They give it, it was amazing how close that challenge was. It was actually nail biting. Yeah. I really thought there was going to be a comeback. I mean, what a great because they made it such a you know, because Jeff hyped it to be such a blowout yeah. from the get go. I thought, what an amazing story this is. Gonna I know, be. but then Hunter, it was like, uh, you know, I, I, I read Hunter's interview. Uh, Dalton Ross, uh, had a, a great mid season interview with Hunter, uh, yeah. and uh, talked with Hunter about a bunch of different things, but. Hunter said, you know, it's really it's it's not really that big of an advantage for him that he has all of the puzzles at his house. Right. He says, yeah, I have all the puzzles, but I only take them out like like once or twice when I do the things I, I don't practice them. Didn't he build them? <laughs> well, well, that was his other argument was that once you built the puzzle, it's like it's too easy. You don't even bother because you built it. So it's so mm -hmm. easy. Yeah. Yeah. But he said, so hey, the, like, like, his, it, uh, it's not like yeah. I practice them all yeah. the time. It's not that unfair. Yeah. Um. Well, he's still got a lot going for him, I think, in the uh, in the puzzle world. Yeah. Yeah. Look, yeah. at least somebody does. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But Stephen, uh, yeah, we got a lot to unpack here about this. Uh, but. 
I had a conversation with Mariah. Uh, we just posted that right before we came on here today. So definitely check out my exit interview with Mariah. I think uh, something that I, I've really wanted to talk about was I, I feel like that Mariah did a pretty good job. And I think that this is also kind of a polarizing thing. Like, uh, did Mariah blow it? Or, as I've said, I think Mariah did a pretty good job. Uh, and I think that she kind of got let down by the Sega tribe. Yeah. I mean, one of the things she noted in her exits was like, you know, this claim that she didn't, you know, out herself as the bottom of the tribe. She was the name they gave, you know, <laughs> like she was the name that the other members of the Sega tribe said they were willing to get rid of. She is like a priori the bottom of the tribe. Yeah. Um, And, you know, if you don't know that, like, that's not like you don't need to know about some complicated vote to realize that the person that they want to get rid of is the person who's at the bottom. Yeah. I, I think this very interesting scenario, though, is that there is, you know, these usually we come into the merge and it's it's all out war. But here yeah. there's also like there's this level of like diplomacy where there are like red lines that the like group, this plus one alliance is not willing to cross. Whereas you know, we had where Venus is throwing out Charlie's name. Well, Charlie wasn't even on the table because that wasn't necessarily the person that Tim and Maria sanctioned as, okay, that was our acceptable person to go home for this round, uh, that which, which Venus has no way of knowing. Isn't that interesting that there was like that there, there was this like controlling alliance that's saying, okay, these are the potential people that we're willing to give up. And it's either going to be this person or this person. Is that unique to this season? I mean, you're you're more of a nerd than I am. You remember this kind of thing. Um, is that unique to this season? Because my understanding was like, and you've even said this in the past, right? That like the big thing about mergatory, you know, we were talking about this last week, is that the tribes kind of say who they're willing to get rid yeah. of and the, and the mergatory boot is just kind of the person that everyone is willing to lose. Like, yeah. doesn't that suggest that there is not that scrambling that should be happening at a merge that we love from merges of merges past? Yeah, mergatory, I think, has kind of done away with the scrambling. I think that the last couple of seasons, I think we've actually seen uh, a bit of this. So maybe it's not quite unusual, but it's a definitely a recent phenomenon. I feel like uh, going back to Survivor 44, you had the situation where we had similarly, like there was like the uh, bro truce that was brokered when Carolyn went with Brandon and Danny. And it was, okay, well, they were looking at the people from don't ask me the tribe names from that season, but the uh, basically from Danny's tribe, they were looking at Josh. Okay, he's the person that's kind of on the outs or K who's on the outs from Brandon's tribe. Kane was uh, one of the other names that was thrown out. Jam Jam, who was also somebody who was not part of that group. Th those were the people that were being talked right. about as being potential options. Then even last season, you had the people from the Reba tribe were saying like, oh, how about Jay Maya? Like, uh, right. why don't we throw, why don't we throw her out? Uh, right. And then Bruce says like, oh, well, what about Caleb? Uh, right. And that's where then the bigger threat ended up being the person that they initially ended up going for. So it does seem like that whatever mergatory started out being, it has now turned into sort of like the power players getting together and then talking about which person is like the uh, like least objectionable uh, person that we all can just pile on for a consensus vote. Yeah. And, and that's such a frustrating dynamic because, you know, I, I just basically tweeted this, you know, Venus's instinct, right? When they come to her and say, it's not going to be you, you know, you're blessed. You were the, the second choice, you know, but we're you're lucky you, you get to like be spared this round. We'll take mm -hmm. you out next, ne you know, tomorrow. Um, is to be like, no, I'm not going along with that. Like, let's do something completely different. That's a dumb decision. And she's right. You know, she's right that, you know, just a, in, in like a pre-Survivor 40 or yes. sort of pre-Survivor 41 merge, the correct, when you hear your name and you hear that there's this big group that like is, is choosing between you and somebody else, the correct move there is to like try to like cobble together another group and find a better target and then like put yourself in the driver's seat rather than just like sort of like, you know, passively and gratefully and gratefully accepting that you're temporarily, you know, safe. But because you know, you have this situation where there's these seven immune players, there's nothing you can do about them. Then there's a very small number of people who are, um, 
are up for elimination and they're all scared. They're all scared. They don't want to rock the boat. If they're not one of the people who, whose names are mentioned, they're like, great, fine, whatever. Like, let's mm -hmm. just make it to the next vote. Um, plus the sense that you have now in the game of like, well, if the next, if the next um, tribal council is another split vote, you know, where the, where the groups are chosen randomly, I don't want to piss anybody off because I could have a bad rock draw and suddenly be with a group of people who I've just made mad. So I don't want to make anybody mad. It, it so much encourages you to be cautious and go along that it becomes impossible really um, to switch up the vote combined with the fact that there's very little time, right? In the actual survivor, you know, it was actual <laughs> in the pre 41 survivor merge, yeah. you know, you had a merge feast, you had days and then, you know, you had the challenge in the morning, but you still kind of had a sense of like where the, these new, you know, new groups could be here. You know, they only find out who's eligible for elimination, you know, probably in the early morning and they have to go to tribal council that night. I mean, there's just no time yeah. to do something. And I listen to Jeff's podcast every single week. You know, I they it, they do they all Jeff also you know they they put a lot of thought into all of this. But it just seems like whatever they're going for, I feel like that the antithesis of that is what's happening. Where yeah. uh, it just does not feel like a situation where the biggest players are going out at this point. It just seems like okay, this is just a continuation of whoever was at the bottom in this pre-emerge part of the game is just like, okay, well, we're just coming up with a, a mutually agreed upon name to have a lopsided vote here. You know, the first couple of mergatories that they had, I, I talked with Evie about this last night, Survivor 41. Okay, that was exciting. The players didn't really know how to play it and what right. to do. But I think that the one that uh, uh, this is, I, I've been thinking a lot about was the Survivor 42 mergatory. And I actually went back and watched that today because I feel wow. like that... That's yeah. good research. Look it at was, this. This, uh, is, this is, you know, stuff I, you don't I, I do in other podcasts. Because yeah. really, what I, I've been thinking about this a lot in terms of, like, I thought Mariah played this exactly the way that she should have played this. And, because I think that when we look back at Marianne and the sim the situation that Marianne was in, that Mariah did basically uh, the same thing that Marianne did, where she had put trust in her tribe. And that Omer says to Marianne, okay, you're going to go out there. Don't play your shot in the dark tonight. Don't play your idol. We got you. Okay. And she did that. She stuck, she stuck with her tribe. She wasn't out there trying to make other deals and it ends up working out for Marianne. And I think that Mariah follows the same prescription. And in that situation, what, what drew me to survivor 42 was that you similarly had this alliance of sort of like the big power players got together. Right. Uh, and a lot of that was also um, from journeys and that there were shared amulets and there was, so there, there were the people with the idols and all the advantages kind of got together. And that's a little similar to what's happened here with this plus one alliance. And then there were some like mutually agreed upon, okay, it's going to be one of these players who are at the bottom is going to be what the names were. And you had Omer, who, much like Hunter, didn't have a vote in that situation. And what Omer was able to do was able to flip things around where there was nobody on Sega other than we're not given a name, that they really were not playing that hard. Right. And what Omer was able to do was that he got in a conversation, he kind of got Lydia twisted around where she said she was willing to vote for Jonathan. She was one of the people that was on, that was able to be out, uh, voted for. And so was Jonathan and so was Marianne uh, from the Taku tribe. And so was Lindsay. And Lydia was basically like, yeah, I'll vote for Jonathan. I don't care, I'll vote for anybody. And Omer was like, aha, I got it. Now, Lydia, who was in the, who was High's person, was able to go back and say to, uh, and to everybody, hey, Lydia said she'd vote for Jonathan. High, can you believe this? She's not with us. And then it put High in this very bad situation of like, hold on, one of you, your person is saying that she's not in with this whole group. Are you are you going to stand for that? Like, uh, and High kind of got like, like uh, his arm bent to say like, okay, fine. You can go after my person. That's fine. I'll give I'll give up my person for the good of being part of this alliance. And I kind of wonder if there was a way to save Mariah. If you were if you were say Tim, if you could go and say like, hey, Venus said she wanted Tevin out, right. uh, or or wanted Soda out. Uh, where like could, could is is there something that 
he could have said to get uh, the Nami tribe to like, oh, she's talking about voting out your people as right. opposed to Maria, hey, maybe. Yeah. Oh, Nami for Nami, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Nami, where yeah, yeah, that yeah. If, if she could like, or is she like, hey, are you going to stand for that? Like, she's just, right. like voting for like, is, was there a target that they could have said to like, uh, like a, a red line or even to say, um, hey, Q, Venus is talking uh, that she wants to vote out you. Right. Um, you know, like, as opposed to Charlie. Like, I wonder right. if there was like something that they could have where, OK, Venus, she's out of pocket, whatever. We'll worry about her next. Is there something that if Tim and maybe Tim didn't didn't really care about trying to save Mariah? Like, I think that Tim seems like, all right, Mariah can go, whatever. She voted. She voted against Jem, who wasn't working with Tim, uh, yeah. but she's not in my alliance. So I don't care about her. I got yeah. a new alliance. I mean, that's sort of the vibe that I got. I mean, it's so interesting because even when you when you're describing that 42 scramble, I remember it so vividly where it was like change, like just like pinging back and forth so quickly. And so everyone was running off and like, you know, groups were forming and like that wasn't what we saw at all last night. Right. No. It was just like, OK, here's the deal. And there was a little bit of scramble because it's this you know, or that. Yeah. And, and it was like they they all came to a consensus quickly. And I do think it's like an emergent kind of like, you know, negative aspect of gameplay where people know that they need to be cautious in this phase of the game. And mm -hmm. so they're going to be cautious, like they're going to be cautious now, knowing that it's going to be a split tribal, you know, with with 42, they hadn't seen 41. Right. There they, they, they wasn't yeah. that's that same sense of I've got to like rein it in, play it as safely as possible, because there's so many you know, things upcoming where I could be at the mercy of a bad, of a bad rock drop. Yeah. Not to like glamorize the hourglass also, but 42 also had the hourglass. So there was like the people that thought they were safe, like weren't right. safe. And then there right. was an extra panic uh, also. So like, I, I do think that sort of like the, it, but everybody was very, just very safe here. Like it, all the people, seven people were safe and they were, they were feeling really good. They were also felt like that they had this alliance. So they were going to be fine no matter what. So yeah, there wasn't that same level of panic and people having to play fast. Again, I, I don't want to like really like wax poetically about the hourglass, but I you just heard it that, here. Rob Sesternino loves fire making in the hourglass. The first two mergatories of the new era, I think were the best two. Yeah. Yeah. Because there was that a little bit more chaos. I mean, you know, the problem is obviously not that, you know, the, the raw, the, there's no hourglass. It's that there's half the tribe is immune and you see why they do it. Cause it, I mean, it does like narrow the, the narrative a little bit. It does kind of like narrow the focus, but it's also like very unsatisfying, you know, because like what we love from the merge is the flux. It is those like dynamics that kind of suddenly, you know, clarify and, and all of these relationships that have been building up for, you know, three days or however long it is in the new era. Um, they, they come to a head and now we don't get that because it's like, just like, you know, there's no chance, there's no chance for the underdog to, to take, to take mm -hmm. control. And yeah. especially not if the underdog mentions that they're a fan of Aubrey, <laughs> especially not. Yeah. what do you think about that? When Mariah mentioned to Q about Aubrey, I, it was so funny. I mean, like Aubrey, like Aubrey's a great player, obviously, but like, you know, she's not Mike Tyson. She's Aubrey. Um, you know, but she's not I even Tyson. Like, yeah, yeah. But I feel like it's like, it was one of those things where like almost whoever, you know, if Aubrey had, I'm sorry, if Aubrey, if Mariah had said Parvati, you know, that wouldn't have been, <laughs> that wouldn't have been better for Q. Yeah. Um, there's no one that I think Mariah could have said where Q wouldn't have been like, oh no, you know, yeah. she's, so she's a I, fan of Marianne. Like she's going to get us. With, I spoke with Mariah this morning and I asked her about that. And she said, well, that just to give some context that she had just gotten done talking with Q about his favorite player and Q's favorite player was your friend and mine, Jeremy Collins. And That's she's like, okay, well, I'm, I'm okay to say Aubrey. Yeah. Jeremy's a winner. Uh, but I but actually do think, I mean, Jeremy actually is a good choice because he's so famously loyal. Like that was his like defining thing over his seasons was mm -hmm. just being super loyal to his allies. And I actually think that's a really good, like, you know, there's a little bit of a Twitter debate of like who you should say, you know, if you're asked the question, you know, who your favorite player is, like who's someone that, you know, will minimize your threat. I actually kind of think even though Jeremy's a, a, a you know, a winner, he's a good choice because he really stuck to his, his, you know, his commitments. Well, Aubrey was uh, rather loyal to her allies, I would think. Yeah, she didn't throw anybody in. I mean, like this, like, oh, Aubrey was setting people up left and right. Like, was she? Like, she was super tight yeah. with Neil. I mean, she was super well, tight with Joe. It's hard um, with people uh, who don't know the show especially well and don't right. know the characters especially well because you don't know what kind of preconceived notion they have about anybody. 
Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, it didn't matter who Mariah said. Like, no matter who she said, yeah. be like, oh, no. You know, uh-oh. That's, I mean, I can't even think of who a person Val would be. Val Collins. She, yeah, exactly. She's got two idols already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, who would you say, Rob? Well, there was, you know, what I was, said uh, last night, I, I would say Penner. Penner's a good one. Yeah, that's a very a good one for you, too. But, you can do but, the Penner impression. I can do the that. impression, but then also yeah. then, uh, but he uh, did a mutiny. Uh, he, yeah. he walked off the mat. So yeah. uh, there's that. People will always find, like, something about right. uh, anybody. Okay. Um, I, I thought it was also super interesting where you have these two tribes, Nami and Siga, where that Siga's game plan was, hey, we're not going to show any cracks. Um, right. That, now, Nami... Did I do not believe this was intentional? Ended up showing a lot of cracks, yeah. and, and I think that Venus actually did them uh, quite a service by uh, proving that they were such a dysfunctional tribe that dysfunctionality actually was a great camouflage for yeah. Nami ultimately. Yeah. And and I wonder if in future seasons uh, that if we're going to go through this same sort of mergatory, like should tribes sort of like amplify? just how dysfunctional they are in the lead up where Siga this whole season were vibes where you get along kumbaya. I'm sure that was on the mat as well. Should tribes be trying to even like make it seem like that there, there's a lot of problems with the tribe. Yeah. That's very funny. Like fake dysfunction. That's a very, very good idea. It was interesting to me, you know, on that subject of dysfunction that when Venus came up with this idea, like, Hey, we need to target Charlie. The person she went to was soda. You know, they were talking about it together. And it's mm -hmm. like, obviously there's been this tension, but like when it came down to it, you know, Venus and soda were the ones, you know, who were maybe like, well, whatever, nothing came of that plan. So it's hard to say, you know, how real that was, but yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a really good point because now people are savvy enough to know you because, you know, back in the day, you know, if you had that one tribe member who was like, I'm ready to flip, you're like, yes, great. We got you. Now they're like, okay, like we don't need to worry about you till later. You're ready to flip. You're, you know, whatever. Well, let's, let's worry about the people who are not ready to flip. Cause that's our problem right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's almost like that the whole thing has like flipped on its head where yeah. it's like the worst thing you can be is a cohesive tribe of six where everybody gets along coming into the merge, which is I, ironically like in classic survivor um, or what, what did you, what did you call it before? I don't know. A real survivor, oh, real, in real survivor. <laughs> like ideally your best case scenario <laughs> is get to the merge with an alliance of six where everybody's on the same page. That's the best case scenario Yeah. here. Worst case scenario. Uh, yeah, exactly. You don't want that. Exactly. You don't want yeah. that. Ideally, what do you want? Like three people that get along, three people that get along, right? Yana's in a great spot, mm -hmm. but second best is a real hot mess. Uh, four or five people that really barely like each other. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. the second best worst obviously is six people all on the same page they get along <laughs> it's really true it's very funny <laughs> but that's great that's that's a that, that's a wonderful aspect of, of contemporary survivor i like classic survivor you know it's like new coke and classic coke you know who can say which one is better mm -hmm. we, all, we all loved new coke yes yeah. um the yeah so new survivor or, or contemporary survivor like yeah I, that's that's a kind of fun feature of it that you actually see people reacting to like the way past tribe dynamics have have played out and and coming up with new with new strategies yeah you know I was fascinated by your tweet earlier about how in a, you know, pre survivor 41 world, uh, that the Venus coming in would have been, you know, in the best spot, uh, yeah. to be able to flip things around. But I was struggling to think of who is the person that has, that was the Venus that was able to really springboard from that position. Well, it's true. Like those people don't often win. You know, you think of like Cochrane, you know, in, in, in survivor 23, Three, but actually, like, Cochrane it was not necessarily that person. That Cochrane was more of the person who was at the bottom, and then they put him up to go and like try to be a double agent, and then they flipped him around. Um, so, but he won. He, he won from that just in the next season. Yeah, in, in the next season, yeah, he went. On, he went on to win from that. But I'm struggling to figure out the person who uh, came into the merge as like the Shean, the classic Shean, who right. is like, I hate my tribe. I can't wait to work with you. And then it was able to springboard them into, uh, you know, a, a very deep run. Well, I wasn't necessarily saying that that's like a winning move, like to be able to be that person, you know, it, it's kind of like a really, I mean, in the past we've talked about, like in, in the distant past, it's actually like an impossible position to be in because when you do, um, when you are that person who's on the bottom and then flips over to the other group, 
you know, your, your old tribe hates you. And so they yeah. never vote for you. Like, it's honestly like, it's like, basically you're, you know, when Jeff was saying at the start, there's one person out here who's already lost. Like that person might be Venus because like, it's like the very fact of her not gelling with her initial group, her, she like has no options and it, it puts her in a really tough spot, finding a place in another group. And like, if she does outlast her group, they're going to like, they're going to like never vote for her. They're going to be so filled with rage that like the person that they outcast somehow outlasted them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was such like a, a poignant scene, you know, a very, it was funny because you had it counterpointed with Hunter looking for the idol, but such a poignant scene where Venus is saying to Soda, like, Hey, like, just talk to me, just like, acknowledge me as a human. And so it's like, mm, no, <laughs> you know, I mean, and it was like fun, like the bickering, like again, and then you've got Hunter with the idol, but it was like really like, you know, moving to see, you know, this person who's just like, Hey, we used to actually have conversations. I'm not asking for anything more than that. Um, so I do think she's in a sort of, un, you know, an, an unwinnable position here. Yeah. Um, in the chat, gotta go pack some, uh, Aaron from token sheen, Steven, what do you well, think? Yeah. But I mean, the same thing, like Timbira hated Aaron and it was because she was at the bottom of their tribe and she turned on them and she outlasted them. Like Aaron from token sheen was like not winning that game, like almost against, I can't think of a, you know, I don't think she wins against anyone in the, in the merge tribe. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, whatever, like maybe Sierra, uh, I still think Sierra wins. Um, so it's just such an unfortunate situation. Like who, who, uh, yeah, who is the person who is at the bottom of their group and then flips and then mm -hmm. actually does yeah. well? Uh, I, I, I still think Cochran is the best one because, you know, he comes back. <laughs> he comes back. Yeah. Uh, Randiculous says Sandra was at the bottom of the heroes uh, versus That's a good one. But that, she never actually got anything that, going. <laughs> that was that was her saving one. grace. I, but and then Sandra ultimately, like, she tries to go and say, "Hey, I'm gonna right. work with you." And then they're like, "No, Sandra." And then and then eventually, Sandra sort of like tail between her legs uh, ends up like, "Hey, like, uh, I I gotta go with the like I want to go out Russell every time." But, but you know that she ends up being you know practical about it of like hey I'll I'll, I'll come come home to the villains yeah yeah and it's it, and and the fact that she was right actually like you know that's what JC JT said is like one of the reasons she won was because like she was right and they were wrong and she was and the, the, all the heroes were like hey you, you warned us <laughs> you you were correct we should not have we should have listened to you yeah um, but like in terms of you know their own longevity in terms of winning I mean I don't know you're right I, I don't think it's a really great spot but it's also I mean you see her at least um you know it's a sensible thing right it's like i mean i guess you're right is it a sensible move if you can't if it doesn't lead to a win like i, I don't know that, that's a tough that's a tough mm -hmm. question yeah but anyway the point is back in the day it would have actually you know it would people would you know come to that person yeah and i feel like that the show should want people in this type of position well, right, right? Like, that's why? the bigger issue you want like the people who are on the bottom to have the room to scramble and make something happen which they don't even do anymore mm -hmm. okay how about the Yanu three? I mean, they've come so far. They yeah. were down and out and really look at them. I mean, I, I think it would be, you know, uh, hard to not put them in the best positions in the game if yeah. uh, we believed in rankings, which are arbitrary and reductive. Yeah. I mean, it did seem like, and you know, who knows how much we believe the preview, but it did seem like Q was like maybe like too much calling the shots a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, but other than that, I mean, I thought that, you know, yeah. Tiff and Kenzie seemed to be in a much better spot well, even than we had hoped they would. You talked to me about Q's position. Uh that I, I said I felt like that and I uh, you know, we gotta get the fishy out there, but I kind of feel like that uh Q had his best episode, I thought, last night. Really? I mean, in terms of the strategy or in terms of, of just, just in terms of the positioning, like, yeah. I feel like that, um, yeah, he, I think he's somebody who does not mind being out in front, Yeah. but I think that, uh, for Q and, and maybe he ends up getting a bad draw, yeah. like the amount of, at, at this particular point in the game, the amount of people that would have to get together and unite against him, I think, if we were playing normal survivor and not going into like a tribe of six next week, like I think it's, it would be rather hard to come by the votes to get out Q. Yeah. Yeah. That's very interesting. I was actually thinking of it, you know, why I liked his, um, um, why, you know, why that his like pull in plan was so good. And it was because like, there's that people going back, like a lot of the times you see in rewards, like last, like last season, you know, you saw, you know, or whenever it was, I guess 40, whatever, um, with like the, the, the meat bro Alliance thing, you know, that Karen mm -hmm. was on, I guess that's 44. Um, is it's just like, okay, like we're going to look out for each other. But the idea 
of having people go back and pick like a, a friend, I think is really smart because like, for a couple of reasons, like first, it's like, it's like, a, it makes it more exciting to the people who are there. Cause then it's like a special treat that they can take back to their, to their friend, you know, like, Not for him. You, well, <laughs> that's that we do need to talk about that, but it's like, you know, it's like, then, then Hunter gets to go back to Tevin. It's like, Ooh, I've got the secret thing that I can, I can bring you in on. And then like, that solidifies their bond. And then like this, the very fact of having talked about it between the two of them, suddenly it becomes more of a real thing rather than just like, yeah, I made a relationship on that reward. Like that was cool. Like we'll see where that goes. But like mm -hmm. the bringing someone in thing, I think that's really where the, the, you know, the chef's kiss, but it, I, I was worried that he was too much in front of it. You know, he really, you know, he was calling that shot of like, you know, I spared you, you know, I spared you, Venus, and I condemned you. And mm -hmm. I, now you dare. Yeah, but like, that wasn't a private authority. conversation. I, I don't think that necessarily got back to her. Like, it yeah. just really does feel like that this um, plus one alliance seems to have really worked and resonated with Hunter and Tevin. And yeah, so right. Tiffany, Q, Hunter, Tevin are good. Yeah. And then. Tim and Maria are the ones that like Tim seemingly <laughs> enough is into it. And Maria is like, okay, I'm not, I'm not against it, but I really feel like that Maria holds all the cards here on how the rest of this game is yeah. going to go. Because I think that Maria, I, who I think is a very smart player, it could go along with this for a bit, but then also at the same time, work on putting together her own things. And, and, and I, I said this with Evie last night, and I would love to get your reaction to it, that Venus wanted to get Charlie out last night. I think Great that move. Venus was ultimately, this was better for Venus that Charlie stayed because if Venus is, if there's going to be a group that comes together to work with Venus, I think it's more likely going to come from Maria and Charlie then had Charlie gone out and Mariah stayed in the game. Oh, that's very interesting. I think that's a great point. That's a really good, uh, that's a really good read on it. Yeah. That, um, I mean, it, it sort of makes sense to right. I mean, it, it, in the idea that like you want your, um, that's so interesting. I mean, that's yeah. Well, but on the other hand, if Mariah is in the game instead of Charlie, like Mariah had specifically said she wanted to have a relationship with Venus. So, well, she actually said that she did. Uh, she thought that Venus, uh, rubbed her the wrong way a little bit. Like oh, she thought that Venus was what? a hard player. And oh, that's so funny. I felt like they, they in, in the whole name for a name uh thing. But I just feel like that, okay, the, you know, Charlie is the person who is going to flip with Maria. Like I think that Mariah just did not have the social capital with Maria that Charlie does. Right, right, right. Well, that's interesting. I mean, then and then Charlie's obviously a very smart player, and, and Maria is obviously a very smart player. So the two of them can maybe see what's happening. Maria's Maria knows about it. <laughs> She's mm -hmm. been told. So you're right. That's that's a really good point. That if there's any kind of, you know. In, counterinsurgency yeah whatever 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 for words we'll use um to the to the whole you know to the, the plus one alliance um that that actually could come also called the journey alliance like don't stop journey playing. six yeah yeah um it could, could probably can they invite ben to the journey six come on <laughs> It does seem like a pretty, pretty cruel that does not rock. Yeah. yeah yeah that's funny um yeah that it, it would come from from charlie that's that's interesting uh, what do you think of tim's how Tim played it. Now, Tim claimed that he deliberately didn't tell Maria that he had added her to an alliance because that he wanted her to make her own decisions and not mm -hmm. give her any preconceived ideas about the, the, the group. What's your read on that, Rob? Uh, Tim just seems like, uh, much like Tim's bowels, uh, working at a very slow pace, uh, that <laughs> he's very con seems very conservative in terms of uh, what he's doing. Uh, we... I, I had the opinion that maybe what changed the gem vote was that Tim came back and told Maria about this plan. And Maria's like, okay, we got, I got to, got to stay close with Tim. Right. Seems like he didn't do that. Yeah. I don't know necessarily. Now uh, I saw Josh Kettles uh, tweeting about this. Like, is, is this kind of what happened with Brendan and Sierra? Yeah, there was, a, you know, I'd forgotten about that until I saw Josh's tweet too, that like Brendan, like never told Sierra. We were like, what? <laughs> like, how do you, perhaps you, the whole cross tribal thing, you know, I was never going to go along with that anyway, because that wasn't a winning position. Mm -hmm. for me. I didn't end up in a winning position anyway, but um, I didn't seem to think that was a winning position, but um, you know, maybe, maybe looking back, I should have. Anyway, um, <laughs> you know, 
Um, well, it was like Brendan's alliance. Like you don't want to be like the per- part of Brendan's alliance because then Brendan wins the game. Is that what Tim was thinking? Like, well, this is yeah. Q's thing. Yeah. Well, I. It's funny because I did not buy Q's rationale. Like when you know, you can see he's clearly responding to a question. Why didn't you tell you know them tell Maria about this? And he's like, well, um, then he's got to come up with a reason. Like I just think he like didn't do it. You know, he like forgot, didn't think about it. You know, mm-hmm. I could be wrong. I um, mean, they did have tribal that night, so then maybe yeah. there was like uh, other things happening. Big your fish to fry and then it was the merge so it, it's possible they they did not have the time to like hey by the way uh or or maybe that tim might have felt that there was like some uh his position was not 100 percent solid and maybe is maria gonna believe me so maybe there are other reasons but i just uh, i think that occam's razor is that he just like didn't have time to do it it's funny too because i mean you know when you do talk to tim i think it's a win I mean, when is, you know, oh, you'll talk to all. I mean, I'll talk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I really am curious, like why he said Maria and not Ben. And Maria was surprised about that too. Like he was like, I thought you and Ben were, were buddies. I mean, maybe mm-hmm. he just feels that deeper bond because of the parent thing. Yeah. Steven, we got a lot of questions to get to here mm-hmm. today. Uh, yeah. So I want to uh, open them up uh, that we have. Okay. Uh, let me start off with, um, all right. Grace Leader. Wanted to know. I'd love to hear Steven talk about the fine line between sticking with your alliance without making it seem like you would never betray them. Right. What should Mariah have done to make Venus the most appealing target to be voted out? Wow. That's a tough one. I mean, it does seem like she was not. I mean, what's interesting is like part of the reason they didn't vote out Venus was because people felt like she was like playing so hard that there was like less of a concern about her, right? She was like less stealthy almost. Um, and it wasn't necessarily like we think that. Um, you know, Venus is the last, I mean, it was just more like Venus, you know, so the, their decision to save Venus was not like, oh, we like Venus more. We want Venus more in this game. It seemed like it was more that Venus is not going to create challenges for us down the line because we've all kind of clocked that she's playing hard. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas yeah. Mariah, we don't, doesn't necessarily have that. Like what yeah, I, did, go ahead. I thought Tiffany said it best where it's like, Hey, they, they don't want to tell us about yeah. Mariah. That that kind of makes us want to vote her out more. Uh, yeah. And it was the fact that um, Nami was like so quick to say like, sure. Yeah. Take, you know, take my wife, please. You well, know, what's, let's talk about like, I, one thing I wanted to ask you was like, what is the move there at that when you're, you're, I mean, even, even before the Mariah question, yeah. like what should Ben and Tim have done? Like Ben said, nobody. And Tim gave the name. Like, what do you do there? They're saying you need to give us a name. You give them a yeah. riot, right? You need you do. I think you have to give them a name. I, I yeah. think that this came this came up on the traders also, where it's like, okay, um, you don't want to necessarily throw people from your side under the bus, but eventually, when people are like, "Hey, give us," an, and it's turning into a thing, you need to give people something. You can't yeah. come across as that you are giving nothing. Uh, that uh, you know, we had the invention of a name for a name last night, but you need to give the other people something because you're making it seem like that okay you're you're not negotiating in good faith yeah yeah um as for can i just add to the mariah thing mariah i feel like was just i have a lot of uh you know uh sympathy for mariah in the position that she was put in because she really uh yes she could have done more to sort of like scramble and try to save herself but at the same time that she could also piss off her original tribe right and if she pisses off siga then, okay, well, now there's four Sega votes that are coming for Mariah. So yeah. it's a very, like, a uh, tough needle to thread for Mariah to be able to get people to, you know, I mean, Venus, like, uh, didn't worry about pissing off Nami. It just so happened that Yanu was like, okay, well, we look, we see Mariah as the bigger threat. And I almost think that because, you know, and and more than almost think, I think that because Mariah was left out of the previous vote, she more feels like she has to hew to the party line because, you know, I'm on the outs. Like I've got to like ingratiate myself with my, with my group before I can even think about like these other groups. So I don't want to go, you know, against what we've all agreed on. Now, is there a world where she gives Q enough that he feels like she's open to working with him, Mm -hmm. but not so much that she's going against Siga? Like we don't, 
you know, it's hard yeah. to say because we didn't, we don't see those whole conversations. You know, <sighs> maybe she said, I, I, "Hey, tell, let's chat." Like, yeah. I'm like lines of communication. I, I open, think that's it. Know. I think that that's the thing where you know we we saw what Q was able to do with Abanu, where I think that and a Jess also. I think that you know it's hard for Mariah right. to know this, but I think that Q is the type of player if Mariah throws herself at the feet of Q. Of like you, I need, right. I need help. I, I, I don't have anybody. I'm all alone. Like, uh, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do whatever you want. Then I think Q is looking at her as a little bit more like opportunistic. But I think that the fact that she was a little standoffish with Q had that very awkward interaction. That's where he's like, okay, I can't work with this person. But I do think that there was, uh, if if there was a way to save herself, I think it was probably appeal helpless to Q. Yeah. Yeah. Um. That's, that's, or yeah. And again, like, we just don't know the full extent of what they, what everybody talked about. Like, I'm sure that everyone was like, Hey, I'm curious. Yeah, let's, let's leave, you know, let's, let's do something in the future. Let's see, let's, we gotta, we gotta keep talking. You know, like nobody mm -hmm. is completely shutting it down except, except Ben apparently. And it seems to be working out for him. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, yeah. Okay. Steven, how about this question? Yeah. Okay. So, well, look at that. Ben says, do you think Moe's Hail Mary at tribal made Sega flip? and sunk her ship yeah i like the rhyme um yeah. i personally i don't think it had anything i think these uh tribal councils are pr pretty locked in uh going in yeah i i think that's i know and especially you know nobody is suddenly changing their vote and and you know um charlie tweeted that he knew in advance that or that and mariah knew in advance that she was you know gone she was on her way out she played um her shot in the dark accordingly mm -hmm. and that was why charlie voted for venus was because he didn't i mean he didn't necessarily know about the jmi situation um right because that was last season. yeah yeah um so hard to keep track of this, these seasons um but but uh you know he wanted he didn't want himself to go home uh, in a situation i mean that he very well could have gone home there so he, he cast that straight vote just yeah i think that was smart for, yeah oh yeah it was a great it was absolutely the right choice and because he knew that venus had had thrown out his name mm -hmm. yeah okay all right. How about um, James Hall wants to know, does three tribes merging dampen the mergatory? It feels like that there's too many dramatics for players to deal with. Uh, so they revert to tribal lines to keep safe. It's a bit boring. Two tribes might make it spicier. What do you think of that? I mean, I think I think I think there's definitely like a consensus building among among the fandom that like, you know, a, a variation between two tribes and three tribes would be nice to see just in terms of how they, they differently play out. I, they I won't that do way. that. They yeah. won't do that. Yeah. It, it's just so interesting, though, like. Claire sat out of like three challenges and yeah. like instantly Jeff's like, we're changing the rules. All right. <laughs> no, that's not happening. No, not on my yeah. watch. Uh, we're not doing that anymore. Like yeah. that was the one thing that was like, she touched like the third rail of like, okay, we're changing that. Uh, like uh, uh, I decree next season, we're changing the rules. But that was like the only thing that was like, you know, everything else is still, uh, Hey Rob, you know one one thing I really did like, and I think this is a rule change. Like, correct me if I'm wrong. Everyone had to work on the puzzle. Yeah, that I, was, I, really I don't know if it was that. a rule change for the show, but or it just was for this, uh, for this puzzle. Yeah. Yes, and, I and liked they did that earlier this season with the hula hoops, like on the, yeah. on, the on the on the telephone pole. I like when everyone has to compete because then it really it changes the you know exposes the tribe a little bit more. It pushes people. It, yeah. it kind of creates more opportunity for for, well, for drama. Because if if everyone is just doing the thing that they're good at, it's like okay, like great. Like yeah. This is Imagine the, how fast Hunter would have finished the whole thing. It wouldn't have even been close. <laughs> yeah. Truly. Truly. <laughs> um. Yeah. I I have a question for you, Rob, that we haven't yes. really talked about. Yeah. So um there was this debate between Venus or Mariah, right? And the kind of debate came to like, you, Venus is the person who's scrambling around. She's trying to make things happen. And then Mariah, on the other hand, was not really trying to make things happen. And she seemed more open to just like, kind of like going with the vote. Who, if you're the one making the decision, your cue, who do you want to vote out? Because like, you're saying like, on the one hand, you got this person scrambling. I, Q's or their logic was, I'm not worried about her because I know yeah. she's scrambling. On the other hand, you have Mariah, who is seems to be more, you know, willing to play ball. And they're like, she's the scary one because, you know, she's stealthy or something. Um, what, what What's your take here? Yeah, I, I think that Yanu made the right decision Um, yeah. that you have like Siga, who appears to be potentially a block of five. I think yeah. I'm more scared about that than whatever Venus is going to do. Like, I, I, if I'm Q, I, I'm feeling a little bit more like Venus is... Hunter's problem is right. Kevin's problem. Like uh, Venus isn't my problem. Right. And in fact, could be to your, you know, to your advantage down the line. Yeah. I've only got around. three. So she wants to vote out soda next. Okay. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll listen. Yeah. But 
Mariah, that if once she gets through this vote and now Sega is back to five and now, okay, well, what if like uh, then they, they pick up, you know, a couple of people and then all of a sudden that's, uh, I mean, we're down to, going to be down to what, it's 12 now. So they're going to do the split vote. And if somehow like all the Sega come through, all of a sudden there's five Sega. I don't yeah. know if they're thinking that far, like two votes down the road, but you know, there's a path for Sega to potentially get the majority of the group. Yeah. So I understand why uh, they end up going with Mariah over Venus. Yeah. I have another question for you here, Rob. Tim said people commit too early and that was why he didn't want to, um, you know, go all in with mm -hmm. uh, the plus one Alliance. What is your perspective? Do people commit too early or do they not commit early enough? I mean, I think that, um, the history of Survivor is people uh, don't commit early enough. Yeah, I think so, too. I think so, too. Yeah. Um, also, what do you think about when Hunter had the chance to be able to go after the key uh, when the boats were coming? That was fun. That was a very fun scene. I like that. Did that you like fun. it? Yeah. Uh, well, I just felt like there was a little bit. I feel like they retconned it a little bit where I feel like that last week his clue said, uh, you'll have a chance to be able to get your key. And then this week he was saying, like, it's either when you lose a tribe or when they tell you to drop your buffs. That's when I was like, since when? What is this? <laughs> Maybe they just didn't read the whole thing. Yeah. Maybe there was like yeah. a codicil that came, you know, in the in the thing. That you didn't, okay. You didn't... Yeah, there was the, the addendum. <laughs> yeah. Um, but John wants to know, okay, question about uh my loser stink theory. Yeah. Uh can you expand on the theory of a loser stink Rob discussed uh, last week in light of this episode? It is, uh, is it mostly a season 42 and zero vote finalist phenomenon? Or do you see more examples? Who is in danger of stinking this season? Is avoiding the stink the number one reason Sega is correct to have voted uh, Mariah? No, I don't think that. Uh, I think that uh, Mariah was more of a nothing than somebody who was uh, had the loser stink. So who is the loser stink right now? Well, I I I, I hate to say it because I'm such a fan, but uh, right now it's Venus. Hmm. Yeah. It's you know like uh, here let me let me give you a pre um, season for a new era uh, person Adam Klein winners at war. Mm. Okay, like hey yeah. everybody Sony and Sarah they're running things we got to yeah. go after them come on you know. That person ultimately like uh, cannot win the game. Sometimes they last, and sometimes yeah. they they get to the end. And I'll tell you, I, I went back and I watched that Survivor Forty Two. Yeah, Romeo is like, all right, I, I I'm feeling good now. Oh, Hourglass, all right, I'm in power. Come on, Tori. Yeah. Come on, Chanel. Let's do this. Um, you know, if it doesn't take that, that person is just uh not going to be in a position where people uh regard them as, and and they and they stay in the game. Yeah. I but, think that's I think that's what Jeff is saying too at the start of the season about like there's one person who can't win. I think that's the same thing. It's like yeah. you are just in a situation where your personality is for whatever reason not going to like you know connect with the people around you and you are always going to be the one like scrambling and no one is going to listen to you and it's a horrible position to be in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean it's sort of like um you you know you shoot your shot but if, if you miss your shot like it's very hard to come back from that. People see you in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah. You know? Bad. Like um what are you going to do? Um I can make some analogies and I'm going to I'm going to I'm not going to. Okay? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um Steven. Mm. How about um Lorenzo wants to know uh how do we think Ben is positioned in uh his game? I get the sense that Sega overrates his charm and social game based on how he aligns with the vibe of their tribe whereas he doesn't uh seem like uh, his personality meshes with everyone else in the game. That's a really good um that's a really good analysis that like because he was such an important part of their group and their sort of vibe yeah. that he becomes like, you know, mythologized in their narrative but actually he doesn't have the same magic and again like that's almost like the, the inverse of the loser stink right it's almost the inverse of that person who doesn't connect it's with with their tribe it's like the person who connects too hard with with their tribe and like then doesn't like it's not translatable to to the outside tribes uh, yeah i, I mean I, are there other people like that maybe that's just one maybe that's just this one person um, um it's you know it's, it's hard i think that that um gabriel cade once again <laughs> gabriel cade yeah <laughs> but then that look I, I think that if if you 
if you if Ben is your type of person, uh, you love Ben. And, yeah. and I think that Ben is is good at making uh like surface relationships. I think he's a very likable person, but as a player, I, I don't really know. Like, I feel like that he's like very surface level as a player. I don't think that Ben is doing too much scheming. I just don't think that that's, he seems like a, just a great guy. He doesn't seem like that he is overly strategic. And I kind of feel like that, I, I'm not sure I'm getting that from Tim either as being somebody who's overly strategic. Uh, it seems like that out of the people that are left from Sega, it's Maria and Charlie who are the strategists. And I think that they were sort of fine to let Sega be sort of like vibes and surface level during their time together. Yeah. Um, but now um, for Ben and for Tim, like, I don't know if they necessarily have that next gear to be able to like uh, come up with going after big threats at the merge. Well, as you know, and like, you know, one of the, thoughts I really clung to that I stole from Twitter is that this idea that the best strategy in New Era to Survivor is just to be like friends with everyone and hope like the random chaos works out in your favor. You know, like it's just like to be well liked, be chill and yeah, but be who's friendly. The person, who, who was the winner that had that? Gabler? Gabler. Yeah. But other um, than that, like uh, yeah. You know, and Gabler did and Gabler I mean, did Jam more Jam, than, like yeah. obviously played a strong James is not a good example because he played a great game, but he was like, you know, he was just like friends with everybody. He wasn't like, I mean, like he was friends with everybody, he played a hard game, Jam yeah, Jam. Yeah, um yeah. And, and and he's a like he really is a you know a, a very strategic thinker too. Yeah. So yeah. um look, being I think friends with everybody will get you so far, but I don't think it's uh enough just to be like have a good social game. Right, right. Um right. I, yeah, uh yeah, okay. All right. Um, I know we got to start to wrap things up. Uh, anything else on your mind from this week, Stephen? Uh, you didn't give out the fishy. Oh gosh, who do we give the fishy to, Rob? I mean, you, um, it's got to be someone. Um, who do you? Who, who should we give it to? So, I mean, I feel like uh, on a week where there wasn't, too, uh, I mean, Q got his way. I yeah, mean, uh, I get Kim got cute, but like, you know, I, I thought he was a little too aggro about it. I'm going to say Hunter. How about that? How about Hunter? Because he got mm -hmm. the idol. Um, you know, we don't talk about challenge performance, but he did very well in the challenge. And yes. uh, I mean, they did the Nami person did get to stay, but I don't even know if that's what they wanted. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the other thing about Hunter, too, is I thought he played like the no vote thing very well. He did. Um, He's where... did a very good job with that. He really played up like, oh, yeah, I'm just I'm just here, you know, like I, I and he told everyone he yeah. didn't have a vote. And that gave him like deniability for basically everything. Yes. Meanwhile, he's also really he did a very good job. And, I, and I've like uh, tracked that as well throughout the new era where Omer in that 42 episode that I talked about Jesse also in 543. Like it's a good spot to be in to come into the merge, uh, ironically, with uh, no vote at the tribal council. Especially if you're immune, you know, then you can really Especially, play it up. Yeah, that, yeah, that's sort of like best case scenario to be immune. Yeah, I, I said this last night, but that ironically, Hunter, without a vote and safe, had more agency than Venus with a vote, but not safe. Yeah, well, the safety thing is just so it's so broken, I think that like the people and because and then just the very fact of going to the feast, you know, that it's only those seven people, like mm -hmm. maybe there's a world where everyone gets to feed. I mean, I still don't like it, but like, you know, if everyone got to feast, just the very fact of like getting to sit there and dine and like you, you're you're gone now. It, it just like leaves a bad vibe. too. I it's mean, just Survivor. to go through it. I mean, like uh, the last couple seasons, it's like they go to the feast. Somebody says a name at the feast, and that's the person who goes home. It's almost yeah. like that they they the the losers should like at least sit there and get to hear the names that get said. That's um, the thing; like, they don't even get to be in the discussion. Gabler, Gabler throws out Ellie's name. Uh, yeah. in in Survivor Forty Four, uh, Matt and Franny are are talking about uh Josh, I believe. Right. Uh, in Survivor Forty Five, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if uh Caleb's name came up at the. Uh, at the merge feast, I do remember uh, Katora sort of like giving somebody a side eye. Uh, maybe I felt did... like it was afterwards because it was did like Bruce. We... Did Bruce talk about it? Uh... We got it like when they would, but then we got it during like the sort of like merge, like you know, strategy set, like the merge kind of like scramble session. And Bruce was like, Caleb's, Caleb's talking to everyone, not just yeah. Bruce. At least the hourglass like flipped that on its head. Bring yeah. it back. 
Yeah, right. Um, yeah. But it's just I mean, like, the, such but, a bad feeling. Since then, yeah. Since that yeah. point, since they did the hourglass, it's like the winners sit together, sort of hobnob, uh, yeah. rub elbows, pick the person who's going to go home and call it a day. And the others just like wait there to be told like which of them gets to be voted out. It's a bad, it's like, it's not, you know, it's a bad vibe. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Steven. All right. Uh, what else coming up for you? Well, uh, the pa I've mentioned before the Neutrino Prize that I'm judging for Passages North magazine. The submissions close in 11 days. So I want to encourage you to get your short, short fiction. Again, short, short. You know, you know, it, has, it only has to be short, short. Um, Submit at uh, passagesnorth.com backslash contests. Okay. 11 days. 11 days. You can write something short, short in 11 days. Yeah. Look at all of the tweets we put out. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Uh, what else? Anything for you, Stephen? I don't think so. Do I have anything else going on? I don't think so. No. Okay. No. All right. Well, I'm going to be back on Friday uh, to do oh. the uh, patron feedback show coming. We had a great call last Friday. The patrons had some really great strategic questions. Looking forward to that. That's going to be uh, live at 3 p.m. Eastern. So check that out. Also, I did my exit interview earlier today uh so check out what mariah had to say and then over the weekend uh so i'm going to be traveling this weekend but Chappelle is going to be holding down club condo oh. on monday so check that out as well plus uh i took on franny marin in twish as i uh mocked all of the young people who know all the survivor stuff I will be taking on another one in this week in Survivor history. I guess, uh, like, what's what's sadder to be uh, a person in your twenties who knows everything about Survivor, or a person in your forties? Uh, <laughs> Neither. Cast they're against. both yeah. great. It's a yeah. great situation to be in for both of you. Yeah. You're happily we love Survivor. In the show you love my God, that sounds wonderful. All right, Stephen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. We love to read your comments. Uh, keep them coming here on YouTube, and of course, so we appreciate when you like and subscribe. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.